In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to use the use effect hook in React. Now, I'm not going to go into crazy terminology or any of those things. I'm just going to show you examples of how use effect works in React. So here I have my almost blank React app. All it does is output use effect example text. So before I import use effect, first I'm going to import use state hook. We're going to use it together with use effect. So here I have import use state from React. Now this means we can start using use state in our component. So I'm going to create an object A with set A setter function and set it to zero by default. Here I'm also going to create a second state variable B with a set B setter function and also set it to zero by default. This could be any state in your app, like loading bars and all those things. But in this tutorial, I'm going to keep it simple. So here also in the return value of my component, I'm going to output these variables A and B so we can see their values. And so I'll refresh the browser and we'll see that now we have them in our output. So now we are ready to import use effect. So I'm going to add it here next to use state. And this will allow us to start using use effect in our React component. So I'm going to type use effect and use an arrow function as the first parameter to our use effect. And here I'm going to output a simple message just so we can see what's going on in the console when we run this component. So I'm going to output init and I'm also going to output the state for A and B variables we defined earlier. Now if I run this you will see in the console it's being executed two times. That's because our app constructor is being executed two times. And this is because we're running React in strict mode. So go to index.js and here remove react.strict mode. So let's go back to our app and run this again. And you will see that now it's actually executing only once as it would after this app is deployed on the production server. So now our component constructor is running only once. So guys, now we need a way to change our values. So I'm going to copy and paste these two functions, increase A and increase B, and they will both call the setter function for both of these values and increase each number by one. So the use effect hook runs when the value is changed. So I'm going to add two buttons next to each value so that we can click on them and increment each value. So at this point, if I click on the buttons, nothing really happens, but we're going to attach these functions to the on click event to each button and assign that function in the brackets. So whenever the button is clicked, we're going to execute the functions increase A or increase B. So guys, Every time you use the use effect hook first, it's always going to run at least one time when your component's constructor is being executed. So this is why it's a good place for initializing all kinds of things for the first time, like finalizing data from your API calls. And that's just one example. Then also the body of use effect is going to run every time we change the state. So here I'm clicking on the buttons and as you can see, the use effect is being executed again, regardless which state I'm using, A or B. So by default, use effect will execute every time there is a change to any of the state variables in this entire component. But if I use a second parameter of use effect and pass it an empty brackets, and by the way, this is called dependencies of this use effect. So if my use effect dependency array is just a blank empty array, then this use effect will only execute once when the component is constructed. It's not going to execute whenever state changes. So let's take a look at that. So now with this empty dependency array, I'm going to restart 
the React app. And you will see that init is only called once. And what's interesting, now if I click on any of the buttons and change the state, you'll notice that use effect is no longer executing. It still just has been executed only once. And notice that the state is actually changing. It's just the use effect is no longer executed more than once after the first time with this empty dependencies array. But now let's add A into this array and see what happens. So I'm going to restart the React app. And with our A in the dependency array, every time I click on the button, it will trigger use effect because A is now one of the dependencies. But if I click on the second button and, and trigger a change in B state, you will see that use effect is not going to execute because B is not on the dependencies array. It's only A at this point. But if you also add B to the dependencies array and run this React application again, you will see when I click on A and when I click on B, both of them trigger the use effect. So guys, there's one more thing you probably need to know. Use effects can also do a cleanup, which is done with the return function. So type return, arrow function, and here you will do state cleanup. This is an optional feature, and in many cases you don't even have to do this. But in addition to state change, you will see that the cleanup is also being executed after the state change.